Welcome back to the Fierce Fish First Tech Challenge programming tutorial series. Our goal in this series is to provide simple and straightforward guidance in programming an FTC robot. And in today's video, we are going to be looking at how we can update our robot position based on the global coordinate system we created in the previous video. So now let's get started with this. I'm going to do it in a teleop space because I think it is more useful for you to see your robot movement and you'll be able to figure out that way how you want to use it in autonomous so that you can understand your coordinate positions based on starting positions all that fun stuff it worked for me tremendously last season so i hope that you'll be able to use this video to do just that so i've declared our drivetrain and our encoders and also these here that we used in the calibration video. We need these so that we can calculate the ticks per inch. And I've also defined our instance of our global coordinate system. I named mine global coordinate system tutorial. Whatever you named yours, you're going to do it and then give it some name here. I called it position update. So we go into the run out mode here. I know I don't typically use run out mode for teleop, but this makes it pretty easy. So then all of this, Da -da 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 -da. Reset odometry encoders was a void I created down here just to reset the encoders rather than setting them here. Now we're waiting for start. So now what we want to do after we're done with start is we need to start up the coordinate system. So we're going to go position. This is how we start up the coordinate system, by the way. It's going to continue to constantly be updating after this point. So there's going to be three lines here. We got position update. It's going to equal new global coordinate system tutorial. At least that's what I named mine. And we need to take in the inputs we defined in our constructor in the previous video. So let's put in the left encoder. We have to put in the right encoder. We've got to put in the middle encoder. Our ticks per inch. And then our sleep delay. I'm going to use 100. The sleep delay is always in milliseconds, so I'm going to use 100 milliseconds because I think that's enough. We don't want to update it too fast because then the program is going to run slower. We don't want to update it too slow because then you're going to get less accurate movements. 100 has worked well for me in the past. So now the next thing we need to do is create a thread. It's going to be called position, and it's going to be new thread. And that's going to take in position update. We got to keep updating this thread. And now we got to take our thread dot start. And now it has started up in here. And now it's constantly updating. So while there's, oh, I'm all the way over there. Okay, while the op mode is active. We're going to essentially put in, I'm going to put in some tank drive code. So let's do a float variable. And got to do the same for the right side. You can use whatever controls you want for Whatever controls you typically use for your teleop program, I would suggest. And then this is the if loop that I use for my teleop here. That was in one of the previous tutorials. We did robot-centric mechanism drive. This is one part of it. This is actually the tank part of it. And so now to get our coordinate positions, we're going to use telemetry. So we're going to just going to keep adding data. And I'm going to call this one, we're going to want to get our X position. And that is going to be, and this is how we're going, and this is also going to teach you how to get your global coordinates from our previous global coordinate system that we created last video. So it's going to be position update dot return our X coordinate. And then we have to divide that by ticks per, our ticks per inch. 
so that our x coordinate will be where our actual x is on the field rather than based on our encoder input. And we got to do now the same for our y position. Position update, and we're going to return the y coordinates, and that's going to be divided by the ticks per inch as well. Right now, there's one more thing we need to add, and we need to because we need to be able to see what our orientation is, and this is in degrees. You can put in here. Just reminding yours. I like to put in there reminding myself it's in degrees. So sometimes I get confused as to whether it's in degrees or radians, depending on where it is. And then position update dot return orientation. We don't need to divide that by anything because it's just the orientation in degrees. And then of course we gotta update our telemetry. Like just like that. Now after this while loop, we need to stop our um, we need to stop our coordinate system or else it's going to keep going and remember what we did last time. And we can just do this by using position update dot stop because we used runnable. So now or actually we define stop in this global coordinate system tutorial. And yeah, that's basically it for this video. I hope that you driving the robot around on the field and finding the X positions and the Y positions can help you in your autonomous programs as to where and how to get your robot to that position on the field. And that's going to be it for this video today. So from all of us here at Fierce Fish, we hope you have a great day.